Can you follow that? I mean, when our heart stops beating and our last brain wave crashes against the shore of consciousness, then what? Do we cease to exist? Is there life after death? What goes on? What happens? Now, you might be sitting there and you're saying, oh, Derek, time out. This is a Christmas pageant, a Christmas concert. Why are you talking about death? We're here to celebrate the birth of Jesus, and you're talking about death. Well, actually, truth is that it's the events around the death of Jesus that cause us to focus on the events around the birth of Jesus. It's what happened that was so unusual about his death that makes us highlight what was so unusual about his birth. You see, Jesus Christ was the only person to ever be carried into a tomb, carried into a grave, and then three days later, rise and walk out of that grave, never to die again. Jesus Christ rose from the dead and now offers you eternal life. Jesus himself defeated death, and he says, I'm willing to share my victory over death with you. You say, well, how does that happen? Well, let me quote Jesus. This is what Jesus himself said, as recorded in the Bible. Jesus said, God, speaking of the Father, so loved the world, he so loves you, that he gave, speaking of himself, Jesus said, he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him, that is, believes in Jesus, will not perish, but will have eternal life. Jesus said, God loves you so much that he sent me into the world that if you believe in me, you will not die. You will, you may physically die, but you will then, like he did, survive the grave and live on forever. But the key to experiencing this eternal life is right there in that verse. You have to believe in him. Now, what does it mean to believe in Jesus? You say, well, I believe he existed, so I guess I have eternal life, right? Simple? Not so simple. That's not what this verse means when it says to believe in him. But well, what does it mean to believe? The answer to that question is found on a tightrope stretched over Niagara Falls on June 30th, 1859. The guy's name was Charles Blondin. At least that's what he went by. He was a very theatrical guy from Calais, France. And he was a famous tightrope walker. And he advertised that on June 30th, 1859, he was going to walk across Niagara Falls on a tightrope. So thousands gathered, like thousands are gathered here this evening, to watch Charles Blondin, the great Blondin as he was built, cross Niagara on a tightrope. And so, Blondin stood in front of that crowd in his theatrical way. He said, I am Blondin. And the crowd said, Blondin, Blondin, Blondin. He said, do you believe I can walk across Niagara Falls on a tightrope? And they said, we believe, we believe, we believe. Actually, let's do this. All right? Like, I'll be Blondin. And you be the crowd. You want to do this? Excuse me. In fact, okay, yeah, I just so happen to have a cape here. <laughs> and so I'll be blonde, and you be the crowd, and and we'll act this up. So I'll say I'm blonde and blonde, he's blonde and blonde. And I'll say you believe, you say we believe, we believe, we believe. Okay. I am blonde. blonde.
No, but I'm exactly right. <laughs> Out of the mouth of babes, nobody, except one person, stood up. His name was Charles Corco. He said, I'll go. And he climbed on the back of the great blonde man. And together, they went on that tightrope. And they walked across. And halfway across, they both plunged to their death. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> they made it all the way across and survived. But here's the thing. I would put to you that out of those thousands of people who chanted, we believe, we believe, we believe, only one person truly believed. Because believing is more than cheering. Believing is more than acknowledging. Believing is more than wishing for the best. Believing is more than being a fan. Believing is placing your full weight on the shoulders of another. You may be here and you acknowledge that Jesus lived. You may have heard about him. You may be a fan of Jesus. You may say, yeah, he was a great teacher. He was a great philosopher. He was a great moral thinker. You may even say he was a prophet. But unless you are putting the full weight of your eternity upon his shoulders, you are not believing in him like it says in John 3.16. You see, our problem is, is that our rebellion, our failure has separated us from a holy and perfect God. We're not living the lives we were designed to live. That's what the Bible calls sin. And this is what the Bible says. The Bible says the wages that sin pays, just like your job pays a wage, the Bible says the wages that sin pays is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So Jesus said, listen, there's nothing you can do, there's nothing you can bring to me as God that will rescue you from your sin. But Jesus said, but here's the thing. Don't trust in your own deeds. Don't trust in your religion. Don't trust in all your good things. Trust in me alone. Believe in me. Put the full weight of your eternity on my shoulders and I will carry you out of your grave. That's what it means to believe in Jesus. And right now, as I conclude, I want to give you an opportunity to do that. I'm going to pray a prayer. In fact, I'm inviting everyone right now to bow your head, even if it's just out of respect for the people around you. Let's bow our heads together. I'm going to pray a prayer. You disagree with me silently in your heart. We're about to place the full weight of our lives upon Jesus. God, I acknowledge that I am not the person you designed me to be. I am not sinless. I've rebelled against you. I've not lived what I even know I should live. I'm separated from you. And I choose not to trust in my own good deeds. I choose not to trust in my religion. I choose to trust in you and you alone. I rest on your shoulders. I place the full weight of my future, my eternity, upon you. I believe in you. I don't understand it all. I'm still skeptical about some things. But what I do understand, I choose to believe. I give you my life. Fill me with your spirit even now. Change me from the inside out. And guide my life from this moment on. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you just prayed that prayer for Pastor Garrett, maybe you're wondering, what do I do now? Here are some suggested next steps. Take a response card from the seat in front of you, fill it out, and drop it off at our information desk in the lobby. We want to give you a packet full of information about what it means to follow Jesus Christ. If you don't already own a Bible, stop by any table in the lobby. We want to give you a free copy as a gift to you. Maybe you're here and you still have lots of questions, as a follower of Jesus or as someone who is still investigating. Either way, we have the perfect course for you coming up in January. It's called Skeptic. It's for skeptics or friends of skeptics. It's a free course on Wednesday evenings where we ask and answer some of the most difficult questions about God and faith. Sign up online at bway.ca slash skeptic. All right, that's it for now. Thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the show. Merry Christmas.